Chapter 16 How Zia Lost Her Eyebrows I woke to a bucket of ice water in my face. Sadie, get up, Zia said. God, I yelled. Was that necessary? No, Zia admitted. I wanted to strangle her, except I was dripping wet, shivering, and still disoriented. How long had I slept? It felt like only a few minutes, but the dormitory was empty. All the other cots were made. The girls must have already gone to their morning lessons. Zia tossed me a towel and some fresh linen clothes. We'll meet Carter in the cleansing room. I just got a bath, thanks very much. What I need is a proper breakfast. The cleansing prepares you for magic. Zia slung her bag of tricks over her shoulder and unfolded the long black staff that she'd used in New York. If you survive, we'll see about food. I was tired of being reminded that I might die, but I got dressed and followed her out. After another endless series of tunnels, we came to a chamber with a roaring waterfall. There was no ceiling, just a shaft above us that seemed to go on forever. Water fell from the darkness into a fountain, splashing over a five-meter-tall statue of that bird-headed god. What was his name? Tooth? No, Toth. The water cascaded over his head, collected in his palms, and then spilled out into the pool. Carter stood beside the fountain. He was dressed in linen with Dad's work bag over one shoulder and his sword strapped to his back. His hair was rumpled, as if he had not slept well. At least he hadn't been doused in ice water. Seeing him, I felt a strange sense of relief. I thought about Iskandar's words last night. Your brother will need your guidance. What? Carter asked. You're staring at me funny. Nothing, I said quickly. How'd you sleep? Badly. I'll, I'll tell you about it later. Was it my imagination, or did he frown in Zia's direction? Hmm. Possible romantic trouble between Miss Magic and my brother? I made a mental note to inter interrogate him later when we were alone. Zia went to a nearby cabinet. She brought out two ceramic cups, dipped them in the fountain, then offered them to us. Drink. I glanced at Carter. After you. It's only water, Zia assured me, but purified by contact with Toth. It will focus your mind. I didn't see how a statue could purify water. Then I remembered what Iskandar had said about how gods could inhabit anything. I took a drink. Immediately I felt like I'd had a good strong cup of Grand's tea. My brain buzzed. My eyesight sharpened. I felt so hyperactive I almost didn't miss my chewing gum. Almost. Carter sipped from his cup. Wow. Now the tattoos, Zia announced. Brilliant, I said. On your tongue, she added. Excuse me? Zia stuck out her tongue. Right in the middle was a blue hieroglyph. Mint with and that, she said with her tongue out. Then she realized she made a mistake and stuck her tongue back in. I mean, this is Maat, the symbol of order and harmony. It will help you speak magic clearly. One mistake with a spell. Let me guess, I said. We'll die. From her cabinet of horrors, Zia produced a fine-tipped paintbrush and a bowl of blue dye. It doesn't hurt, and it's not permanent. How does it taste? Carter wondered. Zia smiled. Stick out your tongue. To answer Carter's question, the tattoo tasted like burning car tires. Ugh. I spit out a blue gob of order and harmony onto the fountain. Never mind breakfast. I lost my appetite. Zia pulled a leather satchel out of the cabinet. Carter will be allowed to keep your father's magic implements, plus a new staff and wand. Generally speaking, the wand is for defense, the staff is for the offense. Although, Carter, you may prefer to use your kopesh. Kopesh? The curved sword, Zia said, a favored weapon of the Pharaoh's guard. It can be used in combat magic. As for Sadie, you'll need a full kit. How come he gets Dad's kit? I complained. He's the eldest, she said, as if that explained everything. Typical. Zia tossed me the leather satchel. Inside was an ivory wand, a rod that I suppose turned into a staff, some paper, an ink set, a bit of twine, and a lovely chunk of wax. I was less than thrilled.